This video is going to be about pain assessment, pain as a vital sign. Oh yeah, nurse master Charlie in the house, talking about vital signs, oh yeah. Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome to my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie, and if you wanna learn more about nursing related topics, please be sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos. Now, I mentioned in my last video on oxygen saturation that I had started a new nursing education blog, what? yes, a blog on my official website, www.nursemastercharlie.com, where you can find a blog about this vital sign series with more blogs coming soon, as well as find all my music lyric videos of my nursing songs, like the What Are Vital Signs songs. Also, songs like what is diabetes, check your feet, the CPR song, and many, many more, with new nursing songs being released about every one to two months. If you're interested in streaming my music, my nursing songs are on all major streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. You can also find links to most of my nursing education videos, so please be sure to check that out. That website address, once again, is www.nursemastercharlie.com. I'll leave a link in the description. This video is going to be about pain assessment, pain as a vital sign, assessing pain, and how to do a pain assessment, all kind of combined into one. In this vital sign series, I have done a general overview of vital signs video, then did separate videos on what is and how to take a blood pressure, what is a pulse and how to take a pulse using 11 different pulse sites, what are and how to assess respirations, and what is and how to take a temperature 10 different ways, and then oxygen saturation and pulse oximetry, and the why and how to use an SpO2 monitor. Today's video is the last video in my vital signs series, and it's gonna be about pain. Who doesn't have pain these days? Whether it be physical, psychological, mental, emotional, phantom pain, pain is pain and a huge disruptor of lives and day-to-day -day processes of fulfillment and joy. Most people just deal with pain, but as a nurse, it is your duty and responsibility to assess and treat a patient's pain while they are in your care. But first, the NCLEX question. In this vital science series of videos, I have been asking an NCLEX related type question and giving the answer and rationale in the follow-up video. As this is the last video in the vital sign series, this will be the last NCLEX question also. Maybe I'll do another series on NCLEX questions in the future, I don't know. So here's the question I asked in the last video. And as I mentioned, it was a tough one. Here's the question. The hospital sounded the call for a disaster drill on the evening shift. Which of these clients or patients would the nurse put first on the list to be discharged in order to make a room available for a new admission? A a middle-aged client or patient with a history of being ventilator dependent for over seven years and admitted with bacterial pneumonia five days ago. B, a young adult with diabetes mellitus type two for over 10 years and admitted with antibiotic induced diarrhea 24 hours ago. C, an elderly client with a history of hypertension, hypercholesterolemia and lupus and was admitted with Stevens-Johnson syndrome that morning. An adolescent with a positive HIV test and admitted for acute cellulitis of the lower leg 48 hours ago. The correct answer is A, a middle-aged patient with a history of being ventilator dependent for over seven years and admitted with bacterial pneumonia five days ago. The best candidate for discharge is one who had a chronic condition and is most fam familiar with their care. This patient in answer A is most likely stable and can continue medication therapy at home. So why is A, or answer A, better than the others? Well, B, the client with antibiotic-induced diarrhea still needs continuous strict monitoring as blood sugar levels may become unstable and dehydration is still possible. In C, Stevens-Johnson syndrome is a rare serious disorder of the skin and mucous membranes, and it's usually a reaction to medication that starts with flu-like symptoms, followed by a painful rash or blisters that spread. In D, cellulitis is often underestimated as a complication of HIV disease, but they are responsible for increased morbidity. So how did you do? The question has some hidden critical thinking elements in it. That's typically what the NCLEX does to make you think and to ensure that you're going to make the best and safest decision for the patient. So keep studying, keep learning, because in nursing, you're always gonna be learning something new. Leave me a comment on how you did. So now for pain. 
Pain is one of the most common complaints or ailments of a patient and is usually what makes them seek medical attention. It is generally considered one of the vital signs. There are four primary vital signs, blood pressure, pulse or heart rate, temperature, and respirations. Pain is so important though that is, it is considered as a fifth or sixth vital sign depending on where you work. However, others can include oxygen saturation, blood glucose, height, weight, BMI, menstrual cycle, level of consciousness, and actually CO2 level. Although pain is subjective, there are objective findings that can be seen in the vital signs due to stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system, such as increased heart rate or increased blood pressure, but also stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system, such as decreased heart rate or decreased blood pressure, as in basal vagal stimulation. Think of those who pass out due to pain. So what is pain? Pain is a general sign that something in the body may not be working or functioning properly. It may be present as a variety of types of pain, such as dull or throbbing. Pain can be described as acute, which is sudden in its onset due to injury or a blockage, or chronic, a pain that has been present for years and can result from acute pain. So then, how do you measure pain? Well, we measure it through scales. And not through weight scales or weighing scales, but through subjective number scales. Pain is usually measured on a pain scale such as the numeric scale as at a one to 10 or a zero to 10 with zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain. Another common scale is one that you're probably most familiar with is the Wong Baker Faces Scale. Other pain scales may include the Flax Scale, the Cry Scale, the Comfort Scale, the McGill Scale, the Color Analog Scale, Mankowski Scale, Brief Pain Inventory Scale, Descriptor Differential Scale of Pain Intensity. There's a variety of them. Remember, pain is subjective and every person can tolerate pain at different levels. Some people have different goals of pain relief. Some may have the expectation of being totally pain-free and want a zero pain level, while those who live with chronic pain may only want relief from the intense burning pain at that moment. Pain is not always curable and may not go away entirely, but there are ways to treat pain, such as pain medication, rest, surgery, acupuncture, and even meditation. So it is always good to know by asking the patient what is a comfortable or tolerable pain level if zero cannot be achieved. So in the hospital or whatever healthcare setting you're in, if you've given a medication or performed a nursing intervention such as positioning or position changes, pillow changes, lights on, lights off, quietness, then assess before and after the medication or intervention and document it so it can be qualitatively measured how well it worked or didn't work. So how do you assess for pain? I mentioned that pain is subjective and cannot be directly measured. There's no pain meter to measure a patient's actual pain. That would be awesome. Can you imagine scanning a patient's forehead like a temperature or a thermometer, yet it gives a pain level? And then every patient tolerates pain at different levels. However, there is the patient as a pain meter who can give you a pain level, as I just mentioned, as well as the location and describe the type. One more thing you must remember is that pain is what the patient says it is. In addition to using a pain rating scale or a numeric scale, pain can be assessed a little further using a different type of a scale. This scale is the PQRST scale. Some will call it the OPQRST scale, which is very similar and I will describe in a minute, but both will give you a little more information about the patient's pain. Okay, so what does the PQRST scale stand for? Or what is it used for? These letters are popular in the medical and nursing field. PQRST is also used in the measurement of a cardiac rhythm. P being the P wave, QRST is the QRST segment, T wave, and etc. But here I'll focus on the PQRST as using a pain assessment. So the P, what provokes the pain? What causes the pain to start or increase? Is it movement? P can also refer to palliation or does anything relieve the pain? Whether it be position, medication, distraction, whatever. Q, what is the quality of the pain? Is it deep, radiating, sharp, dull, burning, throbbing, aching? R, where is the pain or the area or region or the location? How large is the area of pain? Does it radiate from one area to another? Is it a referred pain? S is for severity, rate with the pain scale or how intense it is. T and O, some assessments will have the O at the beginning for the OPQRST. Some will combine it with the T or the time. So onset or time, when does it begin? How long does it last? How frequent does, is the pain? And does something make the pain start? Also, is there a history of chronic pain? So it is best to assess the patient's pain level when they are at rest and with movement. P 
Patients need to be moving, but usually will not move while they're in pain, which puts them at risk for things like pneumonia and deep vein thrombosis. So that might be an underlying issue and hopefully easily treatable to get the patient up and moving. But first, you gotta treat their pain. So be sure to assess the pain, document the pain level, treat the pain, provide the intervention or medication, the dose, the route, and then follow up how much of the pain was relieved and then document the new pain level. So if you found value in this video and hopefully learned a little something, please be sure to give this video a like. And if you're interested in content like this, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos about nursing related content. And then feel free to leave me a comment about what you thought about the video. I, I read and respond to all my comments. And don't forget to share this video with whoever you would like to, especially those of you who are in nursing, uh, or in pre-nursing, or just anybody who wants to learn about general nursing topics or like this topic about pain. So be sure to watch my other videos on vital signs such as blood pressure, pulse, temperature, respirations, as well as my other nursing topic related videos. Don't forget to check out my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. It's educational and entertaining. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And until the next video, God bless and goodbye. And go assess those pain levels. Pain is what the patient says it is. And is usually measured on a scale from one to 10. One to 10. But also where's the pain? What type of pain? Like burning, aching, radiating, and what makes the pain begin? Pain begin. What are vital signs?